know that the first video game and video game character ever to get its own serial was Donkey Kong. The serial was quoted as barrels of fun for breakfast. Not surprisingly, the serial itself was shaped like tiny barrels. You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode number 79. My name's Gareth Briney. I'm going to be your host. And on my virtual left is Mr. James Burks. How are you doing, James? Hello. I'm not too bad, thank you. Okay, good, How good. are you? I'm very good, thank you. That's, yeah. a, that's a politeness out of the way. Yeah? Yep. Um, good. But on my virtual right is Mr. Darren Edwards. How are you doing, Darren? Hello. I'm very well. How are you? Good to have you back again. Thank you for having me back. Once a month thing. It's you and Paul once a month. Corner regular. I know. It's good. Um, now, how have we been this week? Lockdowns, easing, people have all getting injected. What's what have you been up to, James? What have you been up to? I mean, lockdown like the eating, but I'm still in the house. Okay. And the shutters down, the doors locked, nothing's getting in, <laughs> and no one's getting out. Good. Uh, so as usual, I've been watching lots of wrestling. Um, I had five nights of going to bed at half three in the morning. Wow. Um, that was interesting. Yeah. It's worth it now. Great Good. great fun. Um and I also watched the Invincible finale this week. Yes. I know I know we can't explain it. No. But as a season, if you're into superheroes, it is fantastic. Because it really doesn't follow the usual trajectory of any superhero. Um, story that I've seen anyway. Um, but yeah, it was a great finale. So for people, to finish. For people who don't know, Invincible was a um, Amazon Prime TV series, and mm-hmm. it's an eight-part series based around a kind of like new. We've talked about it on here before. Um, yeah. A sort of new version of superheroes. It it's kind of has a similar feel to it, like the boys do in terms I of. I say that, yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a great cast. Yeah, it has, isn't it? Stephen Ewan, Sandra O, oh, um, oh, I've forgotten the main guy now. The guy um, that plays on your J.K. Simmons. That's it, J.K. Yeah. Simmons. Brilliant. And it has that kind of, is it fair to say, sort of 90s animation style? Or is that, mm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, like we used to watch Spider Man or X Men in the afternoons. Yeah, so, yeah. That kind of thing. It's good, it's very it's good. A bit darker. And that, so you, yeah, very much darker. But you can watch all those now. All done that first season. Yeah. I think they've got it's two. Short. Yeah. Third one. No, they've got two more seasons planned. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Spread them a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a short season. The yeah. first season, so it's it's easy to binge. So if you get into it, just watch it all. Um. So yeah, that that was good this week. That was lots good. Of lots of superheroes. Good. I tried a I tried new food this Ooh. week. What? Called enjoy, enjoy me hot dog. Enjoy me hot dog. What's that? It's, what is that? Basically, it's Korean street food. It's a sweet pancake with like a caramelized sugar inside. Mm. Very nice. Right. I went in my uh, cell box. Ah, so you try it. Do you? Ah. How much? Yeah. How much out of ten? Oh, at least an eight. Oh, wow. There we go. And can you say it again? Because I was about to pronounce it really badly then. <laughs> Enjoy me hot dog. Enjoy me hot dog. Okay, good. I hope that's right. If anyone else is listening, I don't enjoy me hot dog. Let us know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let us know. Just say anything. <laughs> um, Darren, what's your uh, week been like? Um, so very good actually yeah very busy so on the subject of unlocking um, first pub trip for about 10 months at the weekend which was nice mm. the weather held as well which was good we went out on Saturday um, and it was just really nice to catch up with people have a pint 
the small things make a big difference. So that was really enjoyable. Um, and then on the superhero side of things, there was a Marvel Phase 4 trailer, because obviously everything's been delayed and now it's all coming out seemingly something new every month. Um, so lots to look forward to should for we, superhero we just, fans. Should we just talk through those? That'd be quite a useful thing. So what, what do we see? We see in order. Can we remember? Yeah, so um, Black Widow is the first film. I think that's coming to um, streaming platform as a premium release. So on Disney Plus, you'll have to pay a bit more to see it. Um, but it's coming to streaming rather than being cinemas only, which is which is good for fans, I guess, mm. if you've got deep pockets. Um, so that's the first one, which has been delayed for well over a year. Um, then there's uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which is due a couple of months after. Eternals, which has been, again, delayed. Um, the third Spider-Man film, that's coming out uh, in December. And then... From next year onwards, the Doctor Strange sequel, there's the Thor sequel, Black Panther, which has been titled Wakanda Forever. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that after the passing of Chadwick Boseman. Um, The Marvels, which is Captain Marvel 2, essentially. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which (laughs) sounds great. Um, And Guardians Volume 3 in 2023. So loads coming up, as well as the Disney Plus series. I think Loki starts next week, actually. So it's just a full-on Marvel assault at the moment. And we had we had a kind of like a, hit, a teaser at the end of that as well, didn't we? Yes, how could I forget? Of course. So they confirmed that Fantastic Four will be will be coming, but everyone's disappointed because there's no sort of hint of when that will be. Just that it will be at the end of Phase Four by by the looks of it. Yeah. Um, but there's loads coming. There's a few things missing. So people are asking about uh, when the next Blade's coming out um, and. Captain America 4 has been um, kind of been talked about in the last couple of weeks as well. So a few big hitters missing, but I don't think anyone can complain about the amount that's coming out in the next couple of years. James, what are you looking forward to out of all of those? Um, I was looking forward to hearing about Blade, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, Blade is more than anything. Otherwise, the Eternals. Ah. I think it's got a great cast. Yeah, it does. Well, okay. well, otherwise, it's a great cast. Um, um, Fantastic Four. Really different, isn't it? If you because uh, Fantastic Four is an interesting one because it's obviously had the films in the two thousands with uh, uh, Chris Evans and uh, others. Yeah, I can't remember the name. Of. Yeah, and there are two films there. That was they were all right, and then you had the one kind was of all right. yeah, one was all right, and then you had the <laughs> the dark remake, um, <laughs> which was weird. Um, that happened a couple of years ago, didn't it? Um, yeah. What I remember about it is it's, most of it's in a lab and then it's on a rocky planet. That's what I remember. A lab, rocky planet. I think that's about it, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and so who would you want? Who's your, In an ideal world, your cast, who would you have for your um, Dr. Stretchy? I don't know these characters. Dr. Stretchy Arms, let's call it now. Who's he? <laughs> <laughs> um... It's a, it's a good question, really. I haven't really thought about it um, too much because, as you say, it's had such a checkered past. I just hope they get it right, really, yeah. uh, before I before I kind of ask for any more. But it's a good question. I'm not sure. What about you, James? It's tough because you need someone with a bit of charisma. Yeah, not definitely. too much because, obviously, Johnny Storm is the main comedy kind of guy. But you need someone that's a little bit maybe mid forties. I don't know who's available. Do you know who I think it's, it's going to be age. for Doctor Stretchy Arms? Who is Doctor Stretchy Arms? What's his name? Doctor what? Mr. Fantastic. Oh, that's yes. it, yeah. Do you know who I think it's going to be? Crumb. Jim from the Office. <gasps> I would love that. I think it will be because he auditioned famously for Captain America, and mm-hmm. and he he I think. I think he's been rumoured with this part for a while, or a fan kind of wish. I got a funny feeling it might be him. He definitely fits the uh, age range. Yeah, and he's been in a few big things recently, like he had Jack Ryan. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's on his way up. <laughs> he's on his way up. <laughs> yeah. first. Um, now you both watched something as well, didn't you? This week, I think, um, which the whole country watched except me. So what was that? That'd be Line of Duty, mm. um, which has been 
well, talked about more than ever before, I think, in the last few weeks. Um, and it was quite a divisive finale. Uh, didn't play out as people thought it would, I don't think. I don't know what you thought, James. I, I was a bit let down, but I understood the point they were trying to make with it in the end. But it did feel a bit of an anti-climax. Yeah, in the aftermath, I've made peace with it. At the time, <laughs> it, was, it was a good three quarters of an episode. I thought, wow, this is getting tense now. And then the last quarter, well, underwhelmed doesn't even begin to describe it. Mm. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, really? <laughs> I, it, it's one of the few TV shows that I watched as it was on TV. I watched it live. So I wanted to know what was going on. So I wasted an hour every week for that ending. <laughs> That's how I felt. Um, were people was, were people generally disappointed with this ending? Is it was it or is it half and half? Because I, I mean, you can't spoil it, can you? But it just is. No, I think the the creator Jed surname I can't remember how to pronounce. He um. He's quite political. So if you've got him on Twitter, I think he was trying to draw parallels with certain people in British politics today. Um, mm-hmm. So people people that were just watching it purely for the drama, um, I think, were let down a little bit because some of that potential drama made way. So this point could be made around corruption and people's mm-hmm. ability to hold positions and stuff like that. Uh, so without giving too much away, I think, yeah, it definitely split people. Okay, right, fine. I don't think I'm ever going to watch it. I couldn't get past the first episode, so it was fine. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great. You need to give it a go. I know, it's I really can't. Good. Everyone looks a bit bored. All the actors look a bit bored delivering their lines. It was, I don't believe it. You can see the kind of mechanisms in their head looking like, I've got a lot of stuff to say here that's technical, and I don't really believe it. Um, but maybe it does get better. Everyone tells me it gets better. I will give it a go one day. One day. One day. It's over, though. It's over. Is that it? Is that the end of it? Mm, well, they say it's over, but apparently the BBC are open to talks of making another series, so it all depends if the creator wants to go forward, because he's got other projects, something yeah. called uh, Vigil or Virgil coming out in a few weeks on BBC, so he's right. working on other stuff as well at the moment. Okay. I think if your fans complain, I'm sure the ending changed. Yeah. <laughs> Zack Snyder in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, the end of TV series. I mean, I reckon it's probably seventy-five percent of TV series that everyone goes. I wasn't happy how that ended. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's really rare to get it right. Um, Unless you have to say long. Yeah, with so much build, it doesn't even a little bit anticlimactic. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's hard yeah. to finish stuff. I think it really is, and mm-hmm. finish stuff in the way people want want it to finish. You know, we, it's interesting. Dexter is getting a re-release the, by the, the original creator because yeah, yeah. everyone hated that ending. Um, oh yeah, I heard that was controversial. Yeah. I never again. That's one I watched a few episodes of, and I lost lost my way with it. But... Yeah. Um, lost, of course, controversial. People <laughs> hated Lost. Then I like Lost. I didn't mind it at all. Um, yeah, lost is brilliant if you only watched the first season. <laughs> if you stop after that, and go, that was a nice little. <laughs> It's controversial, that. You don't need to anymore. Controversial. (laughs) Um, Now, this week, for me, what did I do? Oh, I got a new TV. Um, Exciting. I got a fancy TV. Um, Isn't that exciting? It's only exciting to me and no one else listening. (laughs) Um, But I got a TV that was an OLED, but also for gaming, it was 120 megahertz. Whatever the hell that is. I don't know what it is. Um, So... But everything looks lovely and shiny and clear. My TV, my old TV, the, the darks were going. So it was starting to yeah. pixelate a little bit. So it, this is like just having it really nice and clear. You've got good yeah. use out of it now. I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really pleased. So it's really nice and it's interesting going in, which I'll talk about in a minute, which leads us on. I'm going to start straight into it because one of the okay. games I play this week and I had it in my old TV and my new one is Returnal on the PlayStation 5 which I got last Friday and for those who don't know Returnal is like a, a roguelike for the developers who did Resogun 
and it's their kind of a big game. And you you play this astronaut who lands on an alien planet, um, and you arrive from the crash, and then you go out to try to find help and try to try to work out what's going on, and then you eventually come up against a, a corpse of a another astronaut, and she examines it and then realizes it's it's her. It's got her uniform on. And as you start to move forward, you're going to die at some point. And when you die, you go back to the beginning of where you are. But it's part of the narrative, in a sense. You have a sort of flashback of things. And then you start again. Um, so it has that kind of roguelike um, element of like repeating levels. But what happens when the level goes back, you have, I think there's six biodomes, which are six huge kind of worlds. And then when you go there, it that gets randomized so you're you'll have the similar locations but it's not exactly the same every time and the creatures react in different ways they're not doing the same loops they're completely different every time so it does feel when you die that you're going back and you're um you're playing something you're playing another level even though some things are familiar so it, it for me i i'm not a fan of those kind of road like games i hate repeating stuff because I was born in the 80s, and that's all we did, is repeat games <laughs> again and again. But this is really, it's it, really got No, where you were born in the 80s. Oh, no, sorry, I was born in the 70s, and I played <laughs> games in the 80s. And, uh, very quick to think about Yeah, that, very good change. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, got my, it's got my interest. I am terrible at it. Um, James Bentley, who used to be on the Xbox Hub, and who's on this podcast, he put on Twitter, I finished... Returnal, and I died 12 times. I've died 40 times, and I can't get past the first boss. I've only just eventually got to the first boss. So, um, wow. other people might find it a plus. I'm finding it quite. I actually get to a point where I'm going, Is this too tricky for me? <laughs> I think it might be. <laughs> I think it might be. But it looks beautiful. It looks amazing. It's nice seeing that kind of contrast with the darks and the blacks in this one. It just looks really stunning and it's really it does feel like a next gen game just the way it runs just the way it moves the way it feels looks the sound everything yeah it's something really good about it but it is hard and there's a there's a massive kind of problem with saves you have to put your because you haven't got quick resume on the playstation so you have to put it into rest mode but if your auto update is on and they're doing lots of updates at the moment it will update and then you lose the run so you have to start oh. again so that's been a massive issue. Um, and I think I've lost my run. <laughs> I haven't gone on to it because there was an oh, update no. last night. And apparently this update doesn't work as well. So there's lots, oh, of, no. there's lots of problems on that side. And I think people are trying to campaign for it to have a save point halfway through. So you don't, right. have, to, you can, you don't have to do that. But it's good. Recommend it. I know Darren's got a PS5, haven't you? Yeah, so um, I've been watching uh, Ryan Mail the Half play it uh, this oh. week, and he's been getting quite animated because it is quite difficult. So I've heard all sorts of words uh, being shouted from downstairs when I've been playing the Xbox upstairs. Um, but yeah, he loves it, and you're right, it looks fantastic, um, mm. and it it feels like a next gen game or a yeah. current gen game or whatever we're calling it, which is great to see some of these starts come through. I just uh, was struck by how much the map looked like Doom and Doom Eternal. Mm. Um, really kind of struck me as similar um so it looks great again i need to make time for it it's on my never-ending list yeah I need to get around to that absolutely um but good though returnal yeah um james what have you been playing something is next gen is that <laughs> well i think you're quite excited i'm playing a game about a boxing duck <laughs> any questions <laughs> <laughs> what's the game called it, it's called Pato Box. Great. And that's the name of the boxer. And it's apparently it's inspired by do you remember Punch Out? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I I don't know how hard that was back in the day, but this is rock hard. So it's a it's a boxing game mainly, but you've only got the ability to move left, right block and left and right hooks so you've really got to time everything and it's proper difficult um, and it's all set within like um, a black and white noir kind of world so it's, it's quite it's a nice little environment frame um, 
but his sword. And then between the fights, you've got a little bit of like point and click adventuring, almost. Wow. You're wandering around, solving puzzles, uh, collecting tokens, um, and talking to people. It's a weird mixture. Um, <laughs> so you think you've seen it all? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm currently stuck on technically the first boss. Um, I've been stuck there for five hours. It, it's tricky. Wow. But I'm that sounds tricky. For more. I, I almost get there because you've got a. It's weird the first boss. Because you can, she can box, but she's got a drone and lightning and something else. So you've got to avoid the lightning. And the drones, and her, and it's 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 hard. Sounds you really have to focus. Yeah, but w- I think once I overcome it, it was like yes, amazing. <laughs> this sounds um, like your returnal. Yeah, it does. maybe that is. I, I normally hate it because it's a bit, you know, you're, you're a boxing duck. It it <laughs> plays to my silly side. Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I'm quite enjoying it. James, is this a new it's, game? Um, no, it was released in 2005. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay. no, no, it was last year. Okay. Um, and no, I, I think it's a, it's a cracking game. Great. I like it. Pato Box, brilliant. Good. Right now. Um, now, talking about easy games, Darren, what have you been playing? <laughs> I was going to say, there's definitely a theme, isn't there? So, uh, yeah, Super Meat Boy Forever, um, the long-awaited sequel to the the hardest nails platformer Super Meat Boy that came out, God, I think it was about 11 or 12 years ago now. Um, yeah, uh, just what you'd expect, really. Absolutely blood-curdlingly difficult, but, again, kind of good enough to keep you coming back for more. Yeah. Um, and in each world, the... Uh, levels are randomised as well so you can play through several times without playing the same level which is uh, really good um, and they're challenging enough but it's the it's the boss battles I was stuck on one for two, two and a half hours because you have to just oh, honestly, you have to pretty much memorise the pattern because if you get one thing yeah. wrong you'll be toast and then you'll have to start from the very beginning of the battle again so it's very kind of learn learn the pattern and, and make all the right moves within, it, within an inch Otherwise, you'll be back to square one. Um, but I reviewed it for the site. I think it went up a week or two ago uh, and gave it a four out of five. Fans of Super Meat Boy will really enjoy it, but it just lacks a little bit of the originality, I guess, of the first one. Um, and the boss battles are very difficult. Very, very difficult. Wow. Wow, Super Meat Boy forever. I don't think I'm going to be playing that. That's the best of the <laughs> um, If we pass our box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, second game I've played this week and I reviewed I've had it for a while actually but um, it's um, it came out the embargo was, was, with um, Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe and that's a, a full motion video game and it's by the people who made Dr. Decker the infectious man of Dr. Decker and the shapeshifter detective by Devecki Studios oh, I played that, yeah, ah, I, played that. Yeah. I reviewed it I think for the Switch yeah. ah, there you for the go site. Yeah, um, it's that team. Um, similar actors are in it. Um, same director, same crew, and it released on Tuesday. I, I, I loved it. I think what was really lovely about it, what they do, I think they're the best at doing what they do. Actually, like that studio, because they do everything with a kind of wink to the audience. It's quite mm-hmm. camp. It's quite fun. It's a bit like watching. It's a reference that no one's going to get, but watching like. Uh, a 1980s um, Tales of the Unexpected or uh, a mm-hmm. Black Mirror episode now. It's, it, it's, but it's done with such f- kind of fun and glee and it's like there's a, the language of there. It's, there's, you follow these two people, Poe and Moreau, who are this kind of like pompous English um, wordsmith and this <laughs> American kind of, and she's American and kind of insightful and thoughtful. And they've got this radio station, which they call Dark Nights of Poe and Moreau. And uh, in this fictional town of August, and then in, there's six episodes that you've played through, and every episode is a different kind of like monster of the week. So it might be someone who's trying to kill them, 
it might be a werewolf one at one point at some point they go into a kind of virtual a, a different reality but what's and it's an all full motion video you make choices about where to go what objects to pick up which affects the story so it's got multiple endings and then at the end of the game you get a percentage thing of all the choices you make compared with the rest of the world who've been playing it and uh but what's really nice is the chemistry between them two is really fun and it's really it's, the performances are really spot on the filming's really spot on it's it's really kind of the it's really good it's got some really nice reviews and i gave it four out of five um and it's got some great reviews it has a really good response from people and it's got i can see it having a fan base there completely you know, and people want more of those characters because you, you could just have more of those episodes. And you know, it's it's you know, I'm a filmmaker, and it's 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 they do really well with the budget they got because obviously they got low budgets, and they're producing what I reckon, you know, over sort of an hour to two hours worth of film, like a feature mm -hmm. film worth of stuff. <laughs> so they've and they won't have much money, but they do everything really well. They do everything with their grey, with their lighting, you know, with their angles. They do they just make good of what how they do it for that kind of budget so i always kind of applaud that it's just good to have something different again with these four motion videos and trying something different and they do a very clever thing when they because they because they did doc, the infectious man so dr decker at one point one of the characters get hit, hypnotized and then goes back to their another character they played in dr decker so oh, aside so it does a really clever meta thing which is that's quite cool good. yeah <laughs> it's really good really good so I recommend that if you're after a good full motion video game, you can't you can't go wrong. Get that. There we go. James, what have you got? Um, I was only thinking I could find a game that I've played that's better than this one. Um, I could choose any game. Okay. It's not great. It's called Cinders. Have right. you played it? I don't know. I don't know where you get your games from. Do you know you make them just for you? And send them to you because I've never heard of any of these games. But Cinders, what? Right? No, I get all these in the sales. <laughs> and now I know why they're in the sales. <laughs> um, it's a visual novel. Um, like um, a different take on Cinderella. Ah, and that is my first mistake. I don't really like Cinderella <laughs> and the story. Um, but I hope it's going something different. I think something more exciting or. You know, it says to be mature, but it's just really boring. Um, as far as we can know, so it even Cinderella, she's I don't know, she's she's different, but not in a good way. I don't think I like any of the characters in the whole novel. Right. Um, which if you don't like the characters, you can't really buy into it, can you? No. Um, not really. But. There's decisions to make here and there which slightly keep your interest, but yeah, it's, it's not a great legal novel. Glad you brought this but, game up. Yeah. Well, there's one good thing. Yeah. Visually, it's amazing. Oh. I mean, the environments, they're absolutely stunning. I don't know how they created them, but the colours really pop out. And there's some nighttime scenes, and the lighting. It, it makes everything feel warm. It's a really warm setting. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, visually it's fantastic. But everything else, just no point really. Okay, good, but that's nice to um, hear. Um, so yeah, if you're looking at cinders, um, just, just don't, don't buy it. How much did you pay for it? I don't really know. All right. <laughs> I bought it a while ago. Um, but I'm not playing it until this week. Oh God! Yeah, good. Welcome, guys. Thank Another you. Game I've played. <laughs> Another good one. You have to. A game that no one's heard of. That's not very good. <laughs> you know what I say? If you miss it, you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren, what's your um, what's your other game? Um, so the other game I've been playing is uh, a game called Tools Up. So I've been playing the expansion pack so it's been released in three episodes and the first one um has just come out so we reviewed the base game back at the end of 2019 i think it was um daniel who used to write for the site uh only gave it two and a half uh, so it's essentially a 
simulation game and you're a bit of a handyman and a gardener as well you just a task with different levels in terms of you might have to wallpaper or lay some carpet to the colours that match the blueprint. You might have to mow the grass and uh, plant some seeds or plant some big trees and pots. So it's that type of thing, a bit like overcooked or moving out or right. not quite as complicated and more repetitive, really. There's Once you've played a few levels, you start to just end up doing the same things on a bigger scale. Um, so it's it's quite, it's probably more suitable for younger players, I would say, um, who aren't looking for like a complex sim. But um, yeah, not not hooked at the moment. I've got to be honest. No, it doesn't sound uh, like it. it doesn't sound. It doesn't hook no, that. no, the expansion's not. The expansion's all based around the gardens. The base game's all about houses and stuff, and it it's the same stuff just with a different skin on. So it doesn't really expand on the gameplay that much. You're essentially doing the same things just in a, in a different place. So. Right. Tools up expansion. Okay. What's it called? Tools up something. Yeah. Um, it's uh, <laughs> set in the garden. One. Set in the, yeah. it's, it's okay. the garden. The garden one. The garden one. one. <laughs> okay. Good. It's like the garden one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll be in the sale soon. Okay. Um, I'm going to put us under news because we've got to get, we've got to get, we've got loads to get through. Would you believe? Um, we are. You don't believe it. Well, you don't. No one believes it. It's still quiet, <laughs> but we've we've got a few things that have been released um, just before we came on air. Um, Ubisoft have announced um, a division. Not a new division, not Division Three, but a, a free-to-play kind of like spin-off called the Division Heartland, um, and we don't know much about it at all. <laughs> at all, we know it's free-to-play. It's set in the universe of the division, and it's going to be a standalone. It's going to release on all the rest in the twenty 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 one twenty two window. Um, no one knows anything about it. Uh, it's free-to-play. Um, someone's mentioned a thing called Transmedia expansion of division that means there's going to be novels and there's a film i didn't know there's a film a netflix film coming yeah, out yeah. wow so. yeah. isn't it with jake james yeah jessica chastain um okay. so we just it, they've just announced it we don't we're probably going to hear a bit more of this at e3 or something maybe it's going it, to be what do you think it's going to be it did it did say it's giving all new perspectives on the division yeah. and given that it's free to play I think it's going to be a match three game. <laughs> <laughs> that that is all I can hope for at this point. Um, Watch this space. Do you think it's like Fallout Shelter? We used to do loads of weird management tasks in the division headquarters. Do you, interruptions. Do you think it's going to be a battle royale? Oh, I hope not. I think it might be a battle royale. <laughs> There isn't enough of those already that are free to play. Yeah. Or something along those Which lines. Yeah, it'd be something along those lines. Or maybe it's a sort of like everything's in the dark zone. Maybe they just do the dark zone and its own. It's all that, all about that. Because that was a... Yeah, that was... That's a, that's a kind of a, the original kind of thing in the dark zone, isn't it? Um, mm. we will, we'll find out more, I'm sure, in the next it's free. Month. It's free. If it's free, it's free. It'll try it. It'll probably be the lead thing from the E3 conference. We'll hear more there. <laughs> um, just a few more quick releases just before we went on. Um, Metro Exodus Enhanced, so the new, uh, the current generation, PS5s and the Xbox Series X. Is this, I think this is all of the Metro games, or is it just the last one? I think it's all three of them, isn't it? No idea. Yeah. No yeah. interest in Metro. It. I think it, um, yeah, I think so. I again, I, it's one of those that I played. What did I play? Twenty three, thirty three, a few years ago. Um, never finished it, and then completely lost track of of the franchise. But I think you're right. I think it's this right. Okay, and it's definitely the kind of all the DLC from the third one and stuff. So yeah, it's you know if you haven't played it, play it on the next. I mean, it's a, it was a pretty, really pretty looking game before you know on the Xbox One. So I'm sure it's going to look. Yeah, we're really tracing it. would be amazing, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. Um, and also, Baldur's Gate. I think a re-release of Baldur's Gate 2 is coming out into the consoles, I think, it's May the 7th. Is that tomorrow? This is yes, it before is. Gone. So that's coming out tomorrow. tomorrow. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Why is it? You not play Baldur's Gate? 
surprisingly, no. Wow. Um, <laughs> the games I haven't played. What's Border Gate like? Like a Diablo type thing. Dungeon oh, Crawler. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not it. But they're already good. And that's a bit weird. It's a bit weird that it's just announced and it's, it's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> that, 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 good. that don't bode well for me. <laughs> it's coming out tomorrow. Um, so we'll see. We'll find out. These, these are just the last th- the three things that happened just before we came on. But other news, other things we've got there. Um, FPS boost to some games. Tell us about yeah. this. Um, they've, uh, after announcing it a few months ago, um, they've dropped another 70 odd titles, I think. So there's about 100 now um, that can make advan- uh, make use of the advanced technology of this Series X. So games such as Alien Isolation, uh, Dirt 4, don't know why, and Dirt 5 is that, uh, and Wasteland 3 are, are just a few that pretty much doubles the frame rate. So they can run at 120 frames per second or, or around that. Um, that they couldn't run on previous consoles that weren't powerful enough. So it's quite nice. There's quite a few games that are on Game Pass as well, so it won't cost you anything extra. You've just got to um, enable it on the uh, settings. But if you press your home button and look in the top corner of the overlay, it kind of tells you if you're using it or not. So they're trying to make it as accessible as possible, I think. What's interesting by the list of games they've got, like you said, they've got loads of games, and like certain ones will go to 120, certain ones are 60. Um... Yeah. There's a few games in there that don't work on the Xbox Series S. Yeah, I saw that. Anthem, Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, Dead Island, um, which is a bit weird. Um, <laughs> Dying Light, yeah, there's it's a few. There's though, some weird there? additions on that list as well. It I- is, Island yeah. Saber. Have you played that one? No. It's a free no. game made by Nat West. Wow. It's such a basic game. Oh. Yeah, it's 120 hertz. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just don't understand that one. Yeah. That's a good um, question. Mad Max? That would impress one of our friends. Yeah, he loves Mad Max. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's good, though. It's good. It's good going back. I mean, I I just played um, on Game Pass today that came out. There was Outlast 2. And I did a little stream of it today, and I hadn't played Outlast oh. 2 for it, but it looked amazing. I mean, it's because I've got this TV, but it did look amazing, even just on the Series A. Re- that's really running smooth. Yeah, so maybe it's just good to go back on the games and have a look. Have you tried anything on your old games? Any different, you two? Not, not, uh, no, not really. To be yeah. honest, I haven't. I need no. to properly have a look and find a couple that I'm interested in and give them a whirl. Yeah. Good. Okay, well, have fun with that. Um, James, you, you brought this to so, our attention. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, did you say Outlast 2 was on Game Pass? Yeah. Today. Yeah. Well, also, oh. FIFA 21 is on Game Pass today. Oh. And Steep. Um, and then Psychonauts is coming in next week. Is it? It's oh, else. brilliant game. Very good. Oh, good. Okay, great. Thank you very much, James. James, you also... And Red Dead Online. And Red Dead Online, yeah. Good. Yeah. James, you're going to tell us about this Tokyo eSports gym that you've been going banging on about (laughs) all week? You just broke it. (laughs) You literally ruined the whole story. (laughs) (laughs) I I noticed it completely by random. Yeah. I thought it was quite interesting. It's a a sign of what's to come. Um, In Tokyo, a company has opened up a gym that is entirely dedicated to esports. <laughs> so you can train there, you can get help from professionals, you can try out for teams. It's an, you know, whatever you want to do in the world of esports, you can do it there for a price, of course. We don't know what that price is, but I thought that's the kind of gym that I would go to. What about you? But is it a gym as well? Is it like a gym and a and a and a sort of gym? Can you get, can you go on a treadmill as well as play I esports? Think it's a gym by name. <laughs> okay. I, right. uh, yeah, I, it, it looks like I remember. I don't know, ten or fifteen years ago, when lots of people crowd into a comic book shop or something and have a land party with Counter Strike. It yeah. feels like the gym is just a bit of a 
bit of a rebranding of what that is essentially mm-hmm. but for the, the modern day gamer i'm looking at a picture now it's basically an internet cafe yeah <laughs> Right. They rebranded it. <laughs> Brilliant. So, 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 so basically also, are they saying, you know, this is where you, if you want to be an e-sporter, you can meet people and get found out. And they get serious. Yeah, okay. Or, so you're not making the right stuff. But they still will, you if, if you're going to pay you 40, 40 pounds oh, a yeah, month. Oh yeah, they'll offer you, yeah, they'll offer you uh, a bit of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There you go. Esports gym. That's good. I thought there was going to be a gym as well. I thought they were going to be do- working out and running onto the computers. I thought that was the whole thing. But I saw a documentary about an esports team in Japan who were, who were, you know, one of their trainers was all about them keeping fit as well. So I had them doing circuits and then, you know, it was part of the whole process. Yeah. Okay. Fine. No gym. I won't be going. Um, the it's, tri- a far, anyway, it's a bit far anyway. It's a bit far. For my membership, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even go. It was one of the things I, I'd have the membership and go. Oh, I've got to go to that gym. <laughs> I'm paying forty quid a month. Why haven't I gone? It is in Tokyo. Um, Tribeca <laughs> Festival. Um, now Tribeca is um, for those who don't know, it's in New York, and Tribeca Festival is a massive film festival. It's like you know. One of the best ones, like Sundance and stuff. Um, and they've done their first ever Tribeca Games official selection lineup. Um, and it's going to be on June the 10th. Rockstar Games are going to put on this lot of, a live outdoor performance um, in New York City's The Battery, which is a waterfront park that I've been to. It's very nice. And they're going to be doing sort of the songs of Red Dead 2, which James would love. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah <laughs> big fan of that game, but it's got a beautiful soundtrack, so it's very good. And and they've got these um, awards, and then it's it's kind of have you ever look at these games? Because all the games are games that haven't come out yet. Is that right? To say? Is that fair to say? Um, yes. Um, we need so. Yeah, I think so. So this award honors an unreleased game for its potential for excellence in art and storytelling through design, artistic mastery, and highly immersive worlds. Um, and the games that are, are put here are there's a game called Harold, Harold Halibut, that I've never heard of. Sounds really fishy. <laughs> hey! Um, Kenya, Bridge of Spirits, has come to the PS5 in August, which you know about and have seen. Uh, Lost mm-hmm. in Random, what's that one? It's by the guys that made Faye. Ah, yeah. Don't, don't games. You can stick it to the man as well. Yes, I do, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, we did see that. We saw that, that one of that Twitch thing, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. Norco, I don't know what that is. Don't know one. Um, Sable, which I love the look of Sable. That's my one of my favourite ones. One. Beautiful game. Mm. Um, Sign- How do you say this one? Signalus? Signalus? Yeah. Something like yeah, that. I've never heard of that one. Right. The, the, the Big Con, which does sound a bit familiar, and 12 Minutes. So um, they're the selections, the games that hopefully will be good. <laughs> <laughs> which one of the others were you, were you looking forward to, James? Probably 12 Minutes. Yeah, 12 Minutes, I think. Okay, it's got the most interesting premise. <laughs> Darren, any of those? I think the um, Kina Bridge of Spirits, really captured my eye at the uh, future of gaming event it looks beautiful it I, does, I, I imagine it sounds amazing as well so I, oh, I'd love to go to some live music even you know video game soundtrack music and bring it on absolutely absolutely yeah um, Mass Effect Legendary Edition um, is coming out next Friday isn't it so Friday the already the, I think it is Friday the la, 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 la. what's the day tomorrow 7th 14th it must be yeah. Well, maybe it isn't. Uh-huh. I made this up. We never know. The 14th. 14th, it is coming out. Good. Definitely the 14th. Um, and it's running on 120. Um, I've lost the way I'm thinking. That it's coming out. Seconds. That's it. Great. On Xbox, Xbox Series X, but only on 60 frames per second for PlayStation 5. That was a reveal this week. I don't think anyone's bothered. <laughs> take that mm-hmm. PlayStation yeah. Uh, yeah it's one of those isn't it <laughs> it's hard this one because it, you know 
it doesn't with the math effect it's about you favoring you're going to look at the just you want to look at the world rather than you're not too worried about it going very 120 frames per second it's, i can't really remember the combat that much except it it wasn't the most important thing about the game the game was expo- exploration mm. and talking to people and being in those worlds wasn't it mm. i wasn't that did you play have you played it down not uh no it's a series that i've hardly played actually i've got to be honest um but uh, this is a great excuse to to really get into it and play them yeah okay yeah it's um coming out next week james hasn't played it as well have you james i played a little bit the second one <laughs> good um like half an hour i, I... thought i'd seen enough but <laughs> it was good to be fair so 120 frames per second isn't really exciting you if it, if it was free, the game, I'd give it a go. Yeah. Um, but, no, the, the, the fact of it could be 160 frames per second, it wouldn't entice me in. Yeah, okay, fine. It's if it's a good game or it isn't. It's lost on you two, this, isn't it, this story? It's 120 yeah. Frames. yeah, fair enough. Let's move on. Sorry. It's all right, it's good. Um, now, there was just a quick um, insider story about Starfield. Now, the rumour was that Starfield, which is Bethesda's... Um, New game that we don't know anything about, apart from kind of an image and a kind of type. There's a rumor that it's going to launch this year, um, and there was a kind of I think this just this is just like a rumor from someone who got asked about it and they said no. Um, whether it's going to be released, <laughs> it's a bit of a non story. Reddit. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a non story. But what's 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 interesting about this? I was just I was talking to Neil today and I said. It's so weird this time. We don't really know anything that's coming out in the autumn, do we? Only a couple of things. And we do sort of think, you know, this is the year that we will will we get the impacts of corona from last year and into this year as well. That will we get much in the autumn? What's going to come through? Will anything be ready? I don't know what you two think. What, what, what do you think is definitely going to come out? FIFA. Yeah, FIFA. Yeah, all the sports titles. Yeah. Uh, wrestling. Yeah. It's definitely a 2K game. Yes. Um, Is there a new Call of Duty coming out as well? Yeah, so, that'll be, that will come out probably, won't it? So Battlefield 6, yeah. Yeah. Both great minds. Apparently a couple of stills have been leaked or revealed about that, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Um, do you think there be another Assassin's? I don't think there probably will be, will there? Not this year. No, I don't mm. think it was as quickly as this year. Far Cry, um, that's, we know that's coming. That's going to be there. That's yeah. going to be their game. Um, but I've got a feeling it's not Halo going to be that it? busy. Halo, yes. Do you think Halo's going to come this year? I would, I would hope so, but I'm not I'm not 100% convinced yet. Right. I prefer yeah. to go on Mounds. Oh, you're never getting that game. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, wait. Once it comes out, <laughs> it goes where it's... Yeah. It's going to be a busy E3 or a very quiet one. It's going to be one or the other. Yes. Um, and talk about E3, there's going to be... Um, we're, we're, we're trying to work out with the Xbox Harbour how we're going to cover this podcast-wise and everything else. But um, we know PlayStation aren't doing it. Um, they pulled out again quite early on. Very interesting. That. Yeah, yeah. I find that fascinating. I think they're just going to do their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's, when they first did it, it was kind of very weird because you thought they were going to do their own thing. No, no, they just didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're going to kind of want to make announcements, aren't they? Because they've got some games probably of PlayStation that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. That's going to, mm-hmm. you know, God of War is still meant to be coming this year. <laughs> we doubt that's going to happen. Um, but E3 is going to be... Um, Digital, isn't it? And there's a few people that have said they're going to join. Square Enix, Sega, uh, Bandai Namco, Gearbox Entertainment, um, and mm-hmm. Xbox, of course, are going to do do their thing. I think Nintendo's going to be there. Um, Ubisoft's Capcom. going to do the Capcom, Take-Two, and Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be a three-day thing that we're going to, we're going to try to co- cover. Um, we have talked about trying to do maybe do some podcasts late at night. Look at James. We've uh, raised our eyes. Yeah, yeah. A night owl. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. You're looking forward to it. I always like an E3. I, I prefer it now. It's all online. But even though there's going to be presenters and stuff, I think. 
Yeah, you don't feel like you're missing out, do you? You feel like you're missing nothing because yeah. you're yeah. experiencing yeah. the same thing. Yeah, you've got a lot of people screaming. And of course, <laughs> um, Gamescom as well, I've said it's once again going to be a digital event in August. Um, um, again. Which is good. Like we said, I think I prefer it. I think it's like like you just said, it's great if you're there. But if you're watching loads of people having a good time, I never like watching people having a good time. It always makes me feel a bit depressed. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's quite big these days as well. Gamescom, you get quite a few chunky announcements, don't you? So yeah. Yeah. it's almost kind of you get a bit of time to digest what comes from E3, and then there's there's more that comes out. So I think it suits the the digital age at the moment. We normally get up to E3, so we're looking at June the 11th. It's not that far away. It's a month away, isn't it? So we normally, in this month, we start to get leaks, so-called yeah. leaks, but they're not leaks because they just want to announce their game so it doesn't get lost in the whole of the E3. So mm-hmm. there's going to be a bit of that, I think. It'll be interesting to see what's going to be, what surprises around the corner. Um, I don't know if surprises. If it's all a leak to head of time, it kind of ruins the, um, the magic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I hope they keep some back. Yeah, I think they will. Um, now, briefly before we go, it's an interesting article that we saw last week, um, and it's regarding Red Dead Online, which, as James said, perfectly is coming to uh, Game Pass. Game Pass. Yeah, mm-hmm. next week. Um, talk us through what, James, talk us through what's happened here. Can you work this out? Am I someone the wrong person to say? <laughs> Well, kind of, because I don't like the game. No. So I don't have much interest. Yeah. But the idea is that certain people in the Red Dead Online community have kind of broken into a prison that shouldn't really be available in the online world. And they've turned it into an actual prison where people in that world can be sent to doing things um, that are breaking the law in the game. Um, It's like um, a fully functioning prison system in the online world. Um, (laughs) It's fascinating, really. Yeah. And and I think there's kind of, you do certain, you do time, you do two days or something on there, don't you? Or something like that for uh, certain things. And, yeah, yeah. They, they're not too extreme. Yeah. But some really like getting a long sentence. And you can break into the prison um, if you want to. And that'll probably right. get you a bit of jail time. Um, yeah, they take it quite seriously. I mean, I, I think I brought this up because I really love this idea of when, you know, especially on open world games, people come in to it and do their own, do their own thing and make their own kind of rules or have meetings. Or uh, I remember Warcraft when Warcraft was really sort of at its height. There was lots of kind of these great kind of events that were happening. I remember at one point there was, you know, of course, there's things that like people would turn up for weddings. So people get married for real inside. What was that big city in Warcraft? Um, Storm something. And they would meet at that kind of church and there would be all these, just all you'd see is thousands of heads with like names upon them all attending this wedding of two people. And I think things like that are kind of amazing. I mean, I think there was one in Warcraft when they all protested about fees. So they all just stripped naked. Everyone, oh yeah, yeah, that? Mm-hmm. yeah, and they yeah. all sort of like just bogged themselves down as a city and got the only thing moving. So it's amazing. It's kind of I'm trying to think. Anything you can think of, you two have heard of before when that happens? Um, I uh, I I can't think of a, a an example that is as detailed as this uh, because it just amazes me. People play role playing games. And they have an urge to simulate real life kind of benign things in life. So, you know, games like Animal Crossing are really successful, but you could do all of that in the real world. But mm. the strive to simulate it in the virtual world is is amazing. Like I remember I've had loads of fun playing Grand Theft Auto and just trying to drive like a normal pedestrian and obey the traffic lights, which is completely <laughs> against what you're supposed to do in the game. But it's That's like great. Um, uh, it's like a game in itself, trying not to get noticed and yeah. um, drive legally. 
That's it's good. Nice. I like that a lot. I had a friend who's an artist who made an experiment exactly that. He played the first Grand Theft Autos one, and his point was to try to make the character move across the world and never engage in any violence. Yeah. <laughs> and he said it was really fascinating. So he did it for hours and filmed it. And then, but of course, people after a while just come out and start pushing them. <laughs> <laughs> trying to engage you what you said you have to do. there's a great little story I thought of um, Elite Elite um, you know the, the the space game yeah the new one there was a, I think there's and I'm going to get this wrong there was 10,000 people got together and made this journey um, across the universe over a, quite oh. a few bit of times and they were all went on this journey together as one thing, so it was a collective to get ten thousand people going together, and then they built this world, this colony, in this other part of the universe. And again, I think it goes to this idea of like organizing ten thousand people <laughs> to do something like that. It's kind of amazing. That is amazing. And everyone joining in, and they're all working together. It's. I think there's something quite exciting about these open worlds. I think when people start making open world games, you know, they start to go, I think it's quite fun for developers. Sometimes developers are shocked by what people do there, you know, for good and for bad. And sometimes they think, I don't know how that could have happened or I don't know how that was, that was never a purpose. But there's something quite exciting about something when it becomes its own entity. Definitely, because yeah. it's kind of, it's, driven by the by the players and by the fans of the game you see a lot of it in minecraft like some incredible environments mm. two scale environments that they make of certain parts of the world and you think that the time and effort and as you say the cooperation people aren't pulling in away and doing their own thing to get everyone to to achieve that together is is quite amazing really yeah yeah absolutely well hopefully we're we'll get more open world games i i wouldn't have the imagination i like following the rules in games that's my problem the same yeah yeah um right gentlemen thank you very much what what are we looking forward to next week james what are you after um right i think it starts tonight it's a new season of dark side of the ring which is a um a documentary series about about murders drugs and all sorts in wrestling lovely yeah nice and yeah I thought we were going to say some kind of like Tolkien thing, Dark Side of the Ring. Aren't you? Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Um, Darren, what have you got? Uh, so for me, it's Resident Evil Village, which is uh, announced on the seventh. Uh, sorry, released on the seventh. Even um, I've played a couple of demos. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not as excited as I was for the classic games like Resi Four was like the peak of Resident Evil for me. But this looks really good, so I'm looking forward to giving it a go. And we reviewed it on the site. Ryan did for us. And he just he came out on Wednesday's review, and I think he gave it a five out of five. He loved it. Um, Very impressive. I think the reviews have been pretty good, haven't they? The, you know, it's a few. It's mainly around eights and sevens, isn't it? A few mm. nines. Yeah. I think I've only seen one five out of ten. Yeah. No, that was it. The rest were yeah. really hard. Yeah. yeah. I'm be looking better for, than Resi Six, that's for sure. That was the low point for me. I yeah, think. Yeah. I really enjoyed Resi Seven, so I'm looking. Yes. For, I'm going to get it tomorrow as well. Um, Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. You're not gay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all on it. <laughs> uh, James, where can we find you if we want to get you? Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at OKUKO. Great. Darren, where can we find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter also uh, at 27 Darren. Brilliant. And I'm on Twitter and Twitch at GB Bradley. But for now, thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye everyone. You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. You had found all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.